Hello, people. Oh, just putting the volume up. Hello, people. Uh, thanks for coming to my channel. Um, thanks for your support, as always. So, uh, I want to talk about an exchange I've just had, um, about fresh in mind. Um, and hopefully it will serve as a sort of template for people to be uh, careful and assertive. I think I've made the right decision. Um, and I'll get to that in a second, but just a quick word on my live stream videos. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done one. I do intend to do one fairly soon. I've just been very busy. There's a lot of things going on at the moment. Um, but I'll try to schedule that maybe sometime this week. So as before, I will put an advance notice about it, an advance video advertising it, and then uh, hopefully people will join in. Uh, okay, so a few days ago, I got a message um, from some random girl in... Uh, in this case, she happened to be in Atlanta. Now, um, I'm always getting spam messages. And usually it's uh, from women who, you know, are <laughs> basically pretending to be glamour models or something like that. I think we all know what I'm talking about here um, on Facebook. You know, it's pretty much every day. And they go to my spam box. Occasionally, I'm sort of intrigued. They'll check out the profile. Um, never really trusting them, but sometimes I'm just intrigued. And for me, uh, a big sort of warning sign or uh, a kind of obvious thing is when they have pretty much no personal information, you know, nothing about hobbies, uh, maybe something about where they live, but nothing about hobbies or groups that they're in. Um, they just have photos of themselves and usually very uh, glamorous type photos. So a common trait with this is they tend to be attractive young women. Um, and maybe that's the case for those who target guys like me. Maybe uh, there are male scammers who pretend to be good-looking guys and target women. It works both ways. Indeed, uh, a number of British women have fallen victim to Nigerian scammers. Um, you know, these are lonely women who get into these uh, certain dating sites and you get guys, um, this is by no means an attack on not all Nigerians, by the way, but it is a problem. You get guys uh, who claim that they need money for the village or they're trying to raise money for children or something. And it's, they're just trying to get, um, you know, prey on loneliness and generosity. And it's a very cynical and low thing to do. Um, now, in this case, I'm going to read out the exchange and... Uh, I, I just want the people to think about this dialogue and think about what transpires. Um, I spoke to her a few times. Um, I, I was deliberately a little bit, um, not standoffish, but let's say scant in what information I was given out because my profile is fairly open and candid. So, you know, if people want to know about me, they can check it out there. Um, but anyway, this is the exchange. Uh, her name's uh, Emily Rubin, assuming that's her real name. Incidentally, I'm not trying to like blacklist anyone here. I'm not trying to vilify anyone. But um, I'm just saying that because... Um, I mean, that, that might be a real name, but she seemed to be Asian-American. It didn't sound like a typically Asian-American name. It sounded more maybe almost Jewish or I, I don't know. But that might be, you know, that might not be a, a factor. That might just be... That might be her name. Anyway, this is the exchange. Like I say, she claimed to be from the Atlanta area. Um, okay. Uh, just bear with me a second. I've done a, a paste, cut and paste thing here. I'm not very good at doing screenshots. Okay, so... Um, I asked her what did she do, but she asked how my day was, so I asked... Uh, uh, like, what have you been up to today? And she said she was at work. So I said, what do you do? I work with a charity organisation. We help the orphans around the world. I reply, uh, sorry, you did tell me. Uh, she said that before. Do you help the orphan find good home? Something like that. Uh, I reply, I volunteer in a charity shop called Bernardo's, which helps children, uh, which I do, incidentally. Um, if you're in the UK, you'll know that shop. Um, I only do it once a week, so it's not like a major, major part of my life. Um, 
Yeah, we give them homes, clothes, gadgets, gadget, free food and scholarship. Um, well, that sounds very generous. Sounds very nice, doesn't it? Will you like to donate money to my company, dear? <laughs> Any amount you want to give is allowed. Is allowed. <laughs> so I re respond, sorry, I only donate through formal channels, i.e. an authentic website or something like that. Um, and she replies, oh dear, but you can donate through our PayPal channel or Google. We are still working on our site for now. Uh, so I respond, can you Perlu copy trading Forex Engan Octofix? Doesn't sound like an orphanage. She had this on her basic info. I don't know what that is. Um, some of that sounds like acronyms or... Uh, and then she responds, that's a company I run an advertisement for, but mainly working for the orphanage organization. At this point, I realize I, I, I've just lost trust. So, yes, well, I prefer to donate to well-established charities. And I'm not so stable right now, anyway, I'm between jobs. To be honest, I don't think this is a good way to raise money. Better to establish your charity first and then do it formally. Sorry, but now I have trust issues because asking for money online for a charity with little credibility is a common scam. And we've only spoken a few times, so goodbye. And then she gets blocked. Now, some people might say I'm a little bit too blunt with that. But, you know, this is definitely a common way that scams operate. Preying on people's generosity and, you know, an orphanage. Who wouldn't want to donate to an orphanage? But uh, the way I see it is if you have an authentic charity, then you'll have something to show for it. You'll have some sort of website, you know, or a, a postal address for the headquarters. You'll have something to say that uh, it's just being set up. Please give me money. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a scam. So I, I just quote this um, to sort of show people what I, I think, you know, they need to watch out for. I'm certainly not an expert on this. I'm not a police officer. I'm not um, a scam expert, but it's just common sense. And anyone watching this, please, please be cautious. Sometimes it's better to be blunt, even a little bit rude, if it means protecting your security. Because you're weighing up um, either a small, small possibility of misunderstanding someone. Maybe she is genuinely running a charity. Um, but the way she's going about it is definitely not very convincing. Um, versus being blunt cutting someone off and then protecting yourself from being scammed. Uh, you know, what would have happened there is, had I been taken in by this, I would have went to PayPal. I'm having PayPal issues anyway, but I would have, you know, put some money into my PayPal account, wired it through, then she'd thank me, then she'd ask for more. I mean, that's how it operates. And for what purpose, I don't know, but... Um, Sometimes you have to err on the side of your gut feeling. Now in her profile, all the pictures, she was a pretty young Asian American woman. You know, there was nothing that gave away any sort of anything to do with her line of work, hobbies, anything like that. It just looked like, you know, like I say in the case of um, I'm a guy. So, you know, play up your looks and that sort of thing. Um, it's sometimes useful to be quite hard line. And it might mean that you are turning down um, an authentic charity. But really, if you're running an authentic business, if you're running an authentic charity, then the way to do it would be to direct, direct someone to a website. Now, um, I had another example, which I'm just saying this because this is an example of something that is more authentic. A Belarusian friend of mine, uh, she is obviously very involved in the political situation in that country. Uh, she lives in Poland now. She's a good friend of mine. We go back a long way, like almost 20 years. And I got in touch with her again relatively recently, partly because of what's going on there. And we were talking quite a bit. And she said if I was interested uh, to donate to a sort of dissident cause. Now, I couldn't at the time, but I didn't see that as a scam because this is someone I knew. And I knew that she genuinely was um, concerned about the 
the situation in the country. So I didn't um, take that as anything suspicious. I couldn't donate at the time because at, at the time I wasn't in a position to do so. But, um, you know, someone who I've spoken to literally a couple of times online um, already asking for money. Yeah, scam definitely comes to mind. So be careful, people. You know, uh, these people are crafty. They will, they will really play on your emotions. And if you're a decent person and you do give to charity, they will exploit that. They will, you know, try to do what she done and sort of, oh, please, dear, please, you know, they'll, they'll plead. They will, they will try to make it sound as sympathetic as possible. But the giveaway is, well, it's sympathetic, but is it authentic? Um, so there's a lot of common sense at play here. Registered charities should have some sort of either website or postal address. It'll be one of the two. Um, and if it's still developing, then it has to fully develop before it can reach out to people. Personally, I prefer to donate to charities that I recognise. You know, big, well-established charities like UNICEF, Oxfam, Amnesty International. They're all well-established and it's common knowledge what they are involved in um but that's it just something to think about uh i mean on facebook i am forever getting these inbox messages the vast majority of them i ignore why did i respond to this one um i don't know uh, i was just intrigued um because sometimes i think well we might be in a mutual group or something that sometimes happens but anyway um there's a lot of criticism of facebook one good thing is the blocking system because it means she can't bother me anymore and she can't try to create another profile that might be fake and then try to you know well i suppose she could still do that but yeah it's good to err on the side of caution incidentally there is another young woman also claiming to be from atlanta so i wonder are they the same person who knows anyway <laughs> Be careful, people, because I've had friends who've been scammed and it isn't fun. It's humiliating. It's very frustrating, you know, that someone would be would take advantage of you and basically steal money from you. I mean, it's theft, essentially, because the scammed money will only be used for their own purposes. Um, and it's actually a form of organized crime. So be careful, people. And, uh, yeah, it's better to err on the side of caution. And bluntness sometimes. My arrow's sticking a little bit, so I'm gonna stop the video. Thanks for watching.